the tiger has held me spellbound in some sense, you know, its beauty, elegance, power, the color combination, the way it hunts, the way it maintains a almost mysterious existence in the forest, very lonely, but never alone. Basically, it's a perfect killing machine designed to take something five times bigger than itself. And that's spectacular when a 200 kilo tiger can take out a one ton bull gaur. It's the design of the whole predation machinery is astonishing. That the tiger still stalks the forest in the wild at all is in part because of the work of Ulas Karanth. No one person has done more to save the species from extinction than this man. I started out working as an engineer. Then in 1965, I read an article by Dr. George Schaller covering the first ever scientific study of tigers. It was called My Year with Tigers. And it opened my eyes. He said, this is exactly what I want to do. He's a superb scientist, but even just as important is that he writes good popular books. He's a good spokesperson for tigers. So he's a very well-rounded individual. Karanth has worked on tiger issues all over the world, but the place which has become almost his wild tiger lab is here in Nagahole National Park, about six hours southwest of Bangalore, India. I came here to Nagarhole in 1967, 41 years ago, and it was completely trashed. Uh, there were hunters everywhere, there was illegal cultivation, there was a lot of logging. I saw very, very little wildlife. When we look at an ecosystem with tigers, the most important thing you look for is actually how abundant is tiger's prey, which means wild cattle, large deer species, wild pigs. Without a lot of prey being available, tiger populations won't be doing well because every single tiger requires 500 prey animals to support it. Grant spent years learning about tiger prey and years more setting up protection strategies for the prey, as well as protection for the tigers themselves. This means a lot of action on ground. You have to search the forest looking for poachers, looking for traps, looking for snares, because today there's a value for tigers, tremendous commercial value. Their prey are being hunted out as food or for sale in markets. So this protection is the cornerstone of uh, really maintaining tiger populations. Karanth first had to convince governmental powers that the tigers were, in fact, endangered. While previous tiger count numbers had relied upon counting paw prints in the forest, Karanth revolutionized the count process using this camera trap technology, basically a digital camera and a tripping device. When the tiger passes in front of the camera, the tiger takes its own picture. That's the beauty of the method, and it's very easy to identify tigers from pictures. They're like barcoded books. When you compare stripes of the tigers, you need two sides of the same tiger to definitely identify it. It's preferable to use the flanks because they are a, a flat surface and the stripes don't get distorted. But the real measure of whether we are succeeding or failing is certainly by counting tigers directly. And this camera trapping method allows us to do that. What Olas brought to it was science. Here's a picture of a whole tiger population. How many are there? How often do they visit the area? How many are resident? How many are transient? While pockets of tiger habitat have flourished under Karanth's conservation leadership, the corridors that allow tigers to move between pockets are disappearing. Asia is rapidly growing economically. We have 9% economic growth in India. This means more highways, more roads, more dams, more mines, all fragmenting tiger habitat. So tigers caught in all these tremendous pressures. The vast majority of Indians don't want to destroy tigers. They want to sustain them, certainly in part because of the way Ulas has made their lives clear to their importance as symbols of India, of their nation. We are looking at the claw marks of a tiger. It stood on its hind legs as it came on this road and made these claw marks. And they also leave scent, which is from the digital pads on this so other tigers can come and sniff and find out who's been here. Due to lack of camera trapping in many possible habitats, tigers' global population in the wild can only be estimated somewhere between just 3,500 and 7,000. Whatever the true number, it is small relative to the survival of a species. But back at Nagarhole, things look far from bleak. The population of tigers in the park has been consistently near 50 to 60 documented cats for many years. 
It's a very productive population. Lots of cubs are being born, suggesting it's a very healthy population. When I see wild tigers doing extremely well in this park and many other places like this, and that I've had some role in that, documenting that recovery as a scientist, it gives me a lot of pleasure. I'm actually not pessimistic about the fate of the tiger. Despite all the pressures, they breed rapidly once the prey base is there and they're protected, they produce a large surplus actually. But I also think it has an almost mystical, spiritual element to it because a lot of people would love to save something like the tiger. They somehow reach back into their prehistoric past and get a direct connection to this big cat and say, I want that cat saved somewhere in this world.